In these slides, I discuss how leaders of organization can prepare the organization for process improvement. These slides were organized by Dr. Alevi. How do we know if an organization is ready for change? What if it is not? What do leaders of organizations need to do before their organization is ready for process improvement? In 10 steps, we identify how process improvement efforts can be implemented, including what organizational leaders need to do to make it a In step one, leaders of the organization need to set mandate for change. Change is difficult. Without top management support, change is not likely to succeed. Process improvement starts when organizational leaders make it a priority. They need to motivate the change by highlighting the discrepancies between now and the future. Organizational leaders should overcome resistance for change by involving people in the change, by dealing with the emotions concerning the change, and by creating communications that are clear. They should create a vision. Top management should also work to develop political support. They should identify key stakeholders that may be affected by the change and influence them to work for the common good. In step two, organizational leaders should create a culture that is conducive to change. This involves many different changes. Not long ago, there was a pervasive feeling among healthcare managers and clinicians that patients are not aware what is the best quality of healthcare services. In this sense, asking from the patient about quality was considered inappropriate. Instead, judgments of quality were left to the clinicians, hence the creation and promotion of peer review organizations. But process improvement requires a focus on the patient experiences. It regards the patient as the customer. While the patient may not know the latest medical advances, the patient does know about his or her own experiences. The patient is aware of his lifestyle objectives. The patient is aware of his functional capabilities. In this context, medical services are evaluated by the patient through how they affect his or her day-to-day -day life. Although they may not understand the medical aspect of the health services, patients can judge the effect of these services on their health status. Patient as a customer is the focus of, of process improvement. Process improvement is about changing systems and processes in the organization and not about encouraging employees to be more productive. Thus, process improvement cannot and should not fire people, no matter how terrible their performance is. It cannot be used to focus training resources on a few individuals. The purpose of process improvement is not to find the bad apples and toss them, but to improve every apple in the basket, the good and the bad. Thus, improvement is expected to occur not through changing personnel, but through redesigning delivery systems. Process improvement flourishes in a culture where people are not blamed for the outcomes, even if it is their fault. Think for a second how difficult it is to see a mess and not blame people involved. Then you can see what a big shift in culture is necessary. Process improvement relies on system thinking. It works by modifying care processes and not asking employees to work harder or better. Some variations in outcomes occur by chance. Occasionally, even the best clinicians have unexpected adverse outcomes. The focus of process improvement should not be on those occasional unexpected events, but on whether a pattern exists. Data can help us examine patterns of outcomes. Analysis can help us understand whether the observed outcomes are due to random chance. Process improvement needs a culture where employees rely on data to decide on key issues. When a claim is made about the problem is solved, 
Okay, then process improvement needs that data. You must observe the process before and after implementing a solution to show that indeed it has solved the problem. In process improvement, everyone must prove their point. Everyone must rely on data to back up their arguments and ideas. This calls for a culture in which employees value data and evidence. It takes a team to put a man on the moon. Teamwork is necessary for completing complex tasks. Changing organization, even simple changes, are difficult to accomplish and require teamwork. Working with team means that you will take time to socialize with each other, to bring each other up to par concerning the process improvement project, to accept solutions that may not agree with your intuitions. Change by fiat, change because I told you so, will not work. Process improvement needs a culture of teamwork. Teamwork means team members can participate in selecting what to work on, in gathering data, and in suggesting solutions. Teams may be more effective than individuals because the more the, the number of people invo involved, the higher the pool of ideas available for decision making. When interdisciplinary teams are involved, more perspectives and experiences are brought to bear on the problem. Communication among the team members is a microcosm of what is needed for an organizational wide change. So it's helpful if teams are starting that communication. More hands on the deck. Teams can do more because they have more people in them. It's also important in implementing the team's decision afterwards. Each team member becomes an agent for change. Teams' decisions are more likely to be adopted than individual ideas. In step three, Organizational leaders should allocate resources for starting a quality unit. This often means a department or a unit is created and funded to assist in bringing about change. This department is responsible for directing process improvement efforts. If most employees are asked to volunteer their time, then why should the organization pay for a resource center and its staff? In process improvement, employees are organized in problem-solving teams. These are autonomous, self-governing teams. These teams design studies, collect information, and report their findings. In order to facilitate the team meetings, the data collection, the data analysis, and the preparation of storyboards, a facilitator is needed. The role of a facilitator is to help the team to achieve its goal, not to actively participate in its deliberation. While most employees participate without pay, the facilitator needs to be paid. He or she is not doing anything else at the company. If not for this task, the facilitator would not have been hired. The quality improvement unit would have responsibilities for assigning teams. If it did not have resources, it would not be able to do this crucial task. Then improvement efforts will not be coordinated to make a large, sustained impact. Projects will be chosen in an ad hoc fashion uh, and organizational objectives may not be followed. Limited results will be obtained from the process improvement teams because these teams have not been focused on problems that matter for the survival and growth of the organization. In step five through nine, process improvement covers responsibilities of improvement teams and not organizational leaders. So we will discuss these steps in a separate set of slides. Leaders of organizations need to be aware of these efforts but the real work is done by members of improvement teams. In the last step, step 10, the, the responsibility of organizational leaders is to take successful improvement efforts and spread the solutions to the rest of the organization, often by talking of their success, by simply celebrating successful solutions in one part of the organization, or sometimes by mandating the change. 
The take-home lesson for this set of slides is that effective change starts from top and needs a supportive environment.